Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and in this video, we're going to show you how we use our wax melter. This is a really nice unit. It's got a double valve, double jacketed. It's made in America, in Wisconsin. This is the prototype model, so it's not quite as refined as the ones that you'll actually get from Thorn Manufacturing. But I'm going to leave a link to them and another company, um, Good Job Bees in Hawaii, that helped them um, come up with the screen right here. So. Let's look down into the tank really quick before I fill it all the way up. You can't see it really good anymore. Let's get my hive tool down in there. But we have all kinds of wax. These balls of wax are just scrapings from different hives throughout the spring. They have wax in places they shouldn't and just collect those throughout the bee yard. This came off of a foundation they didn't draw good. And some of this was just cappings from honey frames. And that's what most of this is going to be. Now down in here, I don't think you can see it anymore, but about an inch or so down, there is the valve for this right here. And this is going to be used for siphoning the wax off here in a little bit. So let's get busy. Let's fill this completely full of wax. We'll show you that, and then we'll come back when it's melted, and we'll show you how we take the wax off, and then what the screen is used for and how really handy a well-designed wax melter is. Rendering beeswax is a messy job. And one thing I wanted to mention is we'll come back in about two hours after we filled it for the first time, and then we'll add about another five gallon bucket of cappings after they've condensed down. This allows us to be much more efficient with the process, and we will start it of an evening, and then we'll pour the following morning. I run my wax melter at about 175 degrees, 180 at the most for a little while. People will run them 200 or even more degrees Fahrenheit, but you could burn your wax doing that and darken it. So we're back to the wax melter and check out this wax right here. Got a good bit in here, a little bit of a junk floating up on top, but we'll deal with that. And that's a good bit of wax right there. If you'll remember, I have the water level just a little bit above this valve. So we should get a little bit of water and then it should be wax with just a little bit of debris in there. There we go. As you can see, we're in the second round of wax pouring. I already have the wax blocks in the background. We have some gorgeous wax coming out on the second round, but I wanted to share with you a couple of tips that will help you out. First of all, in the previous clip, you saw that there was water being poured out. There's probably around two and a half to three and a half gallons of water that come out, but we just don't want to show the whole process or this video would take forever if we showed every little bit. Also, in your first couple of molds that you get your wax in, right when it starts turning to wax, you still get a little bit of water in there, but it doesn't really affect anything. It goes to the bottom of the molds it separates from the wax easily and doesn't seem to cause any issues that I can tell at all. One tip that is really important, I love having the double valve. It makes things really fast and easy, but if you pour out of it a little bit and then leave it for several minutes towards the edge where the gate's at, it may get too cool and that wax will re-solidify and you'll have to get a stick or something and reopen that. So just keep in mind when you start pouring, you don't have to you know, go, 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 go like crazy, crazy fast, but you just need to go ahead and pour it all at once and that way you don't run into that issue. As you can see, it's getting darker. This is the end of the second round and there's some slum floating on the top and some of the really fine particulate matter will get in there. However, that'll sink to the bottom, and when we run all the wax blocks through later, we'll run it through a very fine filter, and it'll be just the nicest wax you'd ever like to have. Overall, absolutely impressed with the ease of this machine, and I have a lot more to show you. Look how much wax we got out of the first round. That is really good looking. And, you know, there's some junk at the bottom, not a whole lot. And this isn't finished yet. This has got most of the rendering done. Very clean, beautiful looking wax. You can see there's some right in here and you can, there's not hardly anything at all. You could technically scrape that off and, and some people would sell it like that. What I'm going to do whenever we're finished 
and get this tank all the way cleaned out is we'll just take all of this wax and put it in there and it'll be almost nothing but wax and then we'll pour it out through the bottom valve and then we will run it through a really nice um, filter. All right, now that we've poured the main portion of our wax off of the top of the water and slum at the bottom, it's time to reclaim any lost wax. And that's where this tank um, is really handy. And we're going to show you how that screen works. It's, it's going to be amazing. So what I have right here is where we poured the water off. There's about an eighth inch, sixteenth of an inch, something like that of wax that was poured in with it. We're going to reclaim that. If you'll look inside the tank, you'll see where I scraped wax off of the screen we were using and other things along the way. So any wax that wasn't able to be turned into a brick uh, like these, we just throw this back in at this point and you can just you know, yank these out and just start chucking them in. Woo, 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 unless it's really hot. Ow. <laughs> Let it cool a little bit. Where's some safety warnings right here? This is just one of those times for a safety thing. No, no bees were injured in the making of this video. Beekeepers, not so much. All right, what we're gonna do now is pour all of that water that we can off the bottom. So we're getting all this water off, we wanna get all of it out of here. All right. That's already slowed down quite a bit. So there's probably a little bit of blockages. All right, that's working pretty good. It's, it's pretty low in there. Go ahead and look down in there one more time. And it is just really, really low. But there's still... It's surprising actually how much wax is still in there that we need to reclaim and it would be a shame to throw it out. Plus, once that solidifies, it's going to be a real big pain to scrape all that out if it freezes up like wax. You don't want to handle it when it's really hot. You know, wax melts over 140 degrees, so that's, that's pretty hot to handle. Now we're going to take this nifty... Uh, screen right here and we're just going to drop that on down in you got to do this while it's still wet now check this out it's all the way down and i ran two rounds and the slum is still below the screen this is really important I'm just letting that drain as much as I want to. And now I'm going to shut this off. As you can see, I only have one of these. Uh, they only had one at the hardware store. I got a PVC one, but it just uh, wasn't going to handle the heat. And just don't do plastic. So we're going to pour this in. And it's cooling that down but you got to put that screen in first or it'll get hard down in there and you can't push it through now check this out so all of the wax that's in the slum is now getting really hard and that's really important now what we want to do is not just get the water above the screen we want to take it over the screen a good inch and a half to two inches. Just like that. Now, it may not seem like much, but I bet if we weigh it out, we'll get a decent bit of wax to come out of that slum, and that'll be really handy. So the screen really helps as some of the slum wants to float up it kind of holds it down. But the wax will break up into you know, really, really tiny liquid bits and liquid bits. I don't think that makes much sense. It'll turn into a liquid and it'll go through the screen. That sounds a lot more professional. Maybe we should edit that. <laughs> and the, uh, the slum a lot of times will catch underneath the screen, but if you have the water level just right at the screen, 
then that wax will bind into your screen as it um, turns into a solid again. So let's go ahead and crank this back up. We're going to warm it up really hot and then we'll show you what we get back out of it and reclaim that wax and then we'll show you how we clean it and then we'll see what happens from there. Now we have used the screen to reclaim the last bit of wax and I was shocked how much wax we actually got back out. And let's see if I can, uh, I'm going to have to grab a hive tool while you're in the way. Get out of the way woman. <laughs> it was nice knowing you guys. Uh, all right. If I can just... Ah, that, there we go. Oh, wow. Look at that big old piece of wax right there. So we reclaimed that out of the slum and out of some of what we poured off into the pels, but all together, and that is a thick, thick piece of wax right there. And we got a little bit of scum on the bottom, some of the floaters, but that's okay. That can be scraped off. Wow. I don't know how much that is, but I'm gonna say that's five pounds of wax that we've reclaimed right there. And as Laurel just showed you down in there, you can see the the screen doing its job. I'm going to pull this out and uh, well you know what I'm going to pour the water off first. We've got all this slum water we've let cool down and I'm going to be using this in a section or two of my garden not on any sensitive plants. You want to be careful because if there's a lot of sugar from the honey in the uh, water it actually could damage them so I'm going to use it kind of far away on some like um, fruit trees or something like that. Berries and put it a foot or so away so it doesn't you know, hit them too hard. They can go out and get it if they want it. All right. And while that's splattering all over me, that's why you wear pants. Let's pull this screen out. All right, so this is really cool looking. And you can see where the wax is coming out of the slum right here and working its way through. There's a little bit that got caught, but that's not hardly anything at all. We reclaimed 99.9% .9 of our wax, that's for sure. And... That's just awesome. You can see how thick the steel is on this. It's... I'd have to do something stupid to mess this thing up right here. Laurel's thinking, well, don't jinx yourself. <laughs> wow, look down into here, Laurel. So we've got all this slum, and you can see just a little bit of wax still coming out of it, but that's what the whole screen and the rest of the system is for, is to help reclaim as much out of the slum as possible. I think it's done a really good job. Oh yeah, and you can see how this just scrapes up real soft. It's like dirt. That's what it's supposed to do right there. This is propolis. This is pupil casings or dirt or any debris that may have gotten into it. That looks like a piece of a frame while we were extracting. But since the wax is out of it now, we can literally, I'm doing this with my hand, of course, and just pulling this up and out. And yeah, that's just incredibly easy. So this is going to be so easy to clean out and we know that we've done a really good job getting our wax all out of here. So here we are at the conclusion of the video and wow, I'm super excited and surprised. This worked a lot easier and better than I thought it would. When I talked to Thorn Manufacturing about making something a little bit more custom, 
Um, they were really open to it because they are beekeepers themselves and so they really understand what we need and why we need it. We definitely could use a little bit more of that in the industry. This double valve has worked really good. And look at all of this wax. This is just from two loads running through it. Now we're going to deal with the slum and we're going to, uh, I want to tell you real quick, this is 56 pounds just on this side alone. So I don't know how much you'll sell your wax for one day, but if I sell it for $8 a pound, that's over $400 worth of wax just on this side. So that's pretty good for two loads right there. And it made the process real easy. Beeswax, it's, it's a little bit of a pain. So anything you can do to make it a little bit fun again uh, is nice, especially when you're having to do a lot. We still have a lot more wax to process, but I'm actually looking forward to it because when you can get wax that's this clean and you know we've got some stuff on the bottom here so we can load this up once we clean it out we can load it up and run it through a filter i'll probably do a separate video on that but it's it's pretty clean and this is some of the last stuff towards the end so it had a little bit more on the bottom than some of it like this block right here that literally just has such a little bit of residue on it so just awesome I wanted to do just a little recap on the end. Everything worked really well for me, especially for the first time. I've got a couple ideas that can make this process even a little bit more smooth for me. But overall, wow, I wish I would have had one of these years ago. It would have saved me a lot of time. And yeah, it's a, it's a decent bit of money. But I'll process about 200 pounds of wax here in the next couple of months, not including this, which was over 100 pounds. And it you know, $8 a pound or whatever wax is going for these days, it'll pay for itself quickly. And I'll have something that is really made to last my lifetime. And if I decide to sell it one day, will still work really good and have a lot of resell value. I really like the fact that it has a double valve system. It has a screen. It's stuff that you can't get at some of the big box B stores. They're not innovating for us. So to see a company um, like Thorn and some of the other ones that are out there that are fighting for beekeepers and trying to create new products for beekeepers, I don't care if I have to spend a little bit more money. I will buy from them because if we don't and we are purchasing from companies that keep ripping us off and taking good products and cheapening them and making them worse and more expensive, we are just asking for more of the same. So I welcome this innovation, and I look forward to seeing more products from Thorn Manufacturing, especially seeing them at our conference. See you there.